Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome to another Beekeeping Basics. Today we've come back to our queen rearing apiary where we've got uh, an unusual setup to show you. We're taking a break from our actual physical queen rearing and I wanted to show you a colony that we've split and where we've got four new queens uh, but we've got quite an interesting split between the queens and I wanted to show you the effects that genetics can have on reproducing queens in a beehive. If you haven't yet subscribed please do consider subscribing it'd be great to have you along. Uh, don't forget we've got our Facebook group Stuart's Beekeeping Basics and also our Instagram and Twitter feed and I'll leave all of the information in the description below and I'd like to thank everybody that's contributed through our Patreon page and helping to support us in producing these videos and if you're interested in helping support us in producing these videos then take a look at our Patreon page and again I'll leave all of the information in the description below. You can see behind me that the summer blackberry flow is just starting. We've got lots of blackberries in flower now at various apiaries and the bees are really packing in the pollen and the nectar. And this is the point at which we're uh, maxing out on our queen rearing. We've got a couple more methods of queen rearing to perform uh, but the queens that we have produced uh, hopefully are now mating or have mated and are now starting to lay and next week we'll produce a video taking a look at some of the nukes and the queen mating nukes that we've produced using both the Miller frame method and the alley frame method and then from that point on we'll have another series of queen rearing methods that we'll uh, share with you. So we're just going to head off and light the smoker, but before we do that, we'll just take a quick look at some of these honeybees on the blackberries. Okay, so this colony um, was actually about to swarm uh, maybe five or six weeks ago. Uh, we came in to do an inspection and in fact they had swarmed but then the swarm went back to the original hive position and the queen clustered under the floor with her swarm. And so what we did was we split the colony down into four nukes and we put the queen into the original hive box and so she had all the original frames with brood that was going to emerge and all the flying bees were going to go back over into the original position. And we took four frames that had each had a queen cell on and placed them into nuke boxes in the position of the original hive. And what's happened is those queens have emerged, they've mated successfully and now we've got the original queen here and four other queens. And so what I'd like to do is to show you the original queen and we'll take a close look at her and then we'll go across to the nukes and we'll show you the queens that we've got there. And it's really interesting in how the honeybee genetics can affect how the bees look or the phenotype of the bee. So we're going to uh, open this up, we'll take a look at the queen and then we'll head over and take a look at the nukes. So the great thing with having the queen marked is that you can usually spot her on the frame before you even bring it out and she's actually on this frame so I can just lift this up and turn it over and although she's not marked particularly well you can see her here and we'll just zoom in and get a close up of her. So what we've got here is a queen that has quite a long abdomen with a dark tip to the abdomen but generally quite light towards the thorax and so those are um, the visible characteristics that we have with this queen. So we're going to pop her back 
nice and gently. We'll just carry out an inspection of the colony. She's just run down that side, so I'm just going to be careful as I place this back so we don't squash her. And these bees have a tendency to run around on the comb quite a lot. They, they don't sit on the comb nice and calmly, um, so they, they are quite fidgety. So we're going to probably look to requeen these at some point, but uh, it's always interesting to see how they develop. So this colony is doing really well. They've produced four nukes, so they've, we've taken several of the brood frames out to populate the nukes that we've got, but they're now drawing the extra frames of foundation that we put in quite well. The end one still has some work to be done, so we're not going to bother with that one. So we'll close these up and then we'll go and take a look at the nukes. Okay, so we've got our queen here. Uh, she's not quite as long as her mother, but she again has that very dark tip to the base of her abdomen but then it develops into several stripes and she's got um, stripes leading up to the thorax so she's different to her mother in that respect but she does have the light area towards the thorax end of her abdomen and the darker coloration towards the rear end of her abdomen so uh, in that respect she's similar to her mother but it takes both male and female genes to produce a queen bee here we've got uh, daughter number two and she has a slightly longer abdomen the abdomen is generally darker uh, although she does have a couple of bands across the middle of the abdomen that again reflect the coloration of her mother. Uh, but generally, the top of the abdomen is darker, all the way from the base of the abdomen right the way through to the thorax. And so here we've got slightly different genetics at play. So this is daughter number two, and we'll pop her back, and then we can take a look at daughter number three. Okay, so here's daughter number three, and she is completely different to the other two. As you can see, she's a very light golden color with just a very dark tip to the base of her abdomen. But other than that, she is probably more Apis mellifera ligustica than any other queen bee that I have in all of my apiaries. And uh, for whatever reason, I tend not to go with the Italian bee. Uh, I much prefer to have darker bees. Uh, however, uh, as you can see, the bees on the comb are generally fairly calm and uh, she's working really well and has laid lots and lots of eggs. So it may well be that we have to reassess and reevaluate uh, how we feel about this particular type of bee. So that's daughter number three. So again, the egg will have come from the same parent queen, their mother, but in this instance the sperm will have come from uh, a very different drone. So I don't have any uh, Apis mellifera ligustica colonies or drones, so it's likely that their mother has mated with 
uh, drones from other beekeepers' colonies, and as a result, we have this mix of genetic material that, that comes through in the bees. So let's take a look at daughter number four. So here again we've got a completely different queen. Uh, she's similar to sister number three in that she's completely light coloured apart from a dark tip on her on the very base of her abdomen and other than that from looking at her uh, they could almost be identical so again uh, this particular queen could well be a direct sister as opposed to a stepsister so she could have the same maternal and paternal genetics as queen number three so what we'll do is we'll take the video back to the office, upload all of the images, and then we'll put them up side by side so that we can take a close look and just examine how close the traits are in terms of the visual appearance of each of these queens. It's going to be really interesting to see how each of those queens compares to the other. And uh, by the time this video comes out, we'll have got the video back to the office and and will have taken a look so that's quite exciting and it's one of the joys of, of beekeeping where you are having an open mating system rather than a closed mating system because you never know exactly how your queens are going to turn out one of the benefits of having so many colonies is that I can select the, the better queens for the various traits that I want so calmness honey production uh, what the brood pattern is like, things like that, disease resistance. So it's, uh, it's a really interesting aspect of, of beekeeping. I hope you found that interesting. Please do hit the subscribe button if you've not yet subscribed and don't forget all of the various social media platforms that we're on and there'll be all the details in the description below. Uh, please do comment, it'd be great to have some comments. And finally, don't forget our Patreon page, which is where you can help support us in producing these videos. Uh, we're going to head back and do some more inspections, but until next time, thanks for watching.